I'm Karen Golden Oronte with Living Histories. Today we are at the Beechwood Congregational Church with Pastor Stephen McDonald. Hey. How are you? I'm doing well. That's good. I know you didn't know we were going to film you today. You <laughs> thought that we were going to have an opportunity to walk around to visit Beechwood Congo Church mm -hmm. um, before it takes on its next life. Mm -hmm. But surprise, I'm here <laughs> to ask you a few questions. Surprise indeed. Okay. Well, you know, America certainly started with religion in mind mm -hmm. and cohasted particularly um, from the late 1600s. Um, the parishioners would walk to Hingham for service. Um, they have records that the people in town paid poll taxes for their land, their homes, and their animals um, in 1711. Mm -hmm. However, it was shortly after that that they they didn't want to be walking to Hingham to, to go to service on Sabbath. So um, in 1717, when Cohasset became its own precinct, um, there was a meeting house that was built on the common um, in 1729 and 21, and then ultimately that became the first church of Cohasset. However, the residents of Beechwood would still have to walk six miles on the Sabbath to get to the service, mm -hmm. uh, at which point they decided they didn't want to do that either, which ultimately led to service in Beechwood, firstly at the uh, Beechwood School, mm -hmm. but ultimately to where we are in this building here, mm -hmm. um, which started uh, in 1866, we've determined, mm -hmm. um, was the beginning of um, the building of this church, which had a few transformations in its time. Mm -hmm. um, so could you, though, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got to the Beechwood Congregational Church? Yeah, um, I am 30 years old, and I uh, have now been at the church. My time at the church just concluded, but I had been here for a little over two years. Um, I was originally born and raised in Arkansas. However, uh, I've kind of lived in a few different places and been in New England now for almost five years. Previously, my wife and I were up on the North Shore. And then uh, I saw a job listing for the pastor opening here at Beechwood. And uh, so we looked at it and explored it further, began discussing it with the church and the search committee from the church. and. Uh, uh, we eventually decided to move here and, and take on this opportunity uh, in early 2014. Uh, so the church at that time had uh, been in a season of uh, uh, decline, uh, just uh, as far as attendance goes and, and membership, and, and uh, the season had, had been going on for uh, probably about 10 to 15 years. So uh, the church was aware that, that and we were aware that this was an effort uh, uh, to see what could happen, to see uh, if the tide could be turned or, or just see what uh, might be in store in regards to the future, uh, but knowing that, that we, were, we were facing uh, long odds. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I, uh, I guess being a little adventurous, said, well, let's go see what can happen. So that's how we got here. Excellent. Well, initially when the, when the church was built, mm -hmm. um, it was um, called the Beechwood Evangelical Union Church of mm -hmm. Cohasset mm -hmm. and Situate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was ultimately called the Beechwood Congregational Church. Mm -hmm. So w can you tell me wh what, who is the, what is the jurisdiction of this parish? Um, well, it was established, as you, uh, I, I believe, pre previously referenced, it was established uh, by residents of Beechwood back in the mid-19th century um, because there was not a church in this area of the community or of the town, and uh, it was a lot harder to go six miles then than it is today. And so it's always uh, been... Um, I guess you might say distinctly uh, Beechwood uh, residents or, or uh, Beechwood um, folks that are connected to the community. Uh, however, over, over the time I've been here and, and before I got here as well, there were a few families that drove uh, from uh, the village side of town or from uh, various parts of Situate uh, during my tenure here. 
um, there were, it was about 50-50 Cohasset residents and Situate residents. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, the, the Cohasset residents were largely uh, people that lived in the Beechwood the section of town, yeah. but not entirely. So what began as distinctly Beechwood, uh, I assume just as transportation got easier over the last 150 years, uh, it kind of expanded outward. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the land that the church is built on was actually donated by the Pratt brothers, John mm -hmm. and Aaron, and um, Mrs. What, Mrs. Clarissa? Clarissa Harris. Harris yes. was one of the, found, or one, who prayed the hardest, let's put mm -hmm. it this way, to mm -hmm. make sure that a church was ultimately built here. Mm -hmm. Because walking from Beechwood or even Jerusalem to go to service in, in, on the common, um, people who lived near there could break after the hour service in the morning and go home for lunch. Mm -hmm. But people who had to walk the distance had to bring their lunch, eat it in the church, uh, meeting house or the church, and then the afternoon service would begin. So it was really an all day mm -hmm. event um, in why the church in Beechwood was very well received at that time. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it is a long day. Um, so the building that we see here that I've got a photograph of um, is what we were just discussing. Because the trim in this building is pretty optic white, mm -hmm. we're thinking maybe in this late 1800s photograph that the building might have been either, I think light blue more so than light gray. I think, mm -hmm. I think light blue would have been more appropriate. Um, but you see the road is dirt, the sideway is side, um, the sidewalk is dirt. And in the back here, you were telling me that, well, here it looks like stalls of mm -hmm. sorts. Mm -hmm. And this steeple uh, was hit by lightning in 1946. Yes. So um, we have a later photograph here, which also must be pre-1946 because it's the same steeple. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas now the building is all painted white, mm -hmm. um, and we can see the surrounding areas here. But now you were explaining to me the back of this building mm -hmm. um, is not the same today. Correct. In uh, the 1950s, the church uh, sold the then parsonage, which was just down Beechwood Street, uh, kind of across from the uh, Beechwood Park. Mm -hmm. They sold the parsonage in order to find a small addition on the back of our building, which on the second floor has a little uh, Sunday school or education classroom and an office space. And then on the bottom level, there's a kitchen and uh, bathrooms. So they, uh, they funded that with that cell in the 1950s. That was 505 Beechwood. I, I, okay, I, I, okay. This was an interesting, this is the centennial anniversary mm -hmm. brochure or booklet. Um, You'll see the new steeple. Yes, there's the there, new yeah. steeple. Lots more trees. Mm -hmm. um, but what was interesting in this, at the, the original um, group, it was the sewing auxiliary. They were the ones who actually funded or mm -hmm. paid for maybe through their sewing expertise, I don't mm -hmm. know, but they were the ones who bought the parsonage. Mm -hmm. And when they did renovate and, and expand this building, they utilized the trades, the neighbors of the, you know, the tradesmen mm -hmm. of the neighborhood who donated their time and mm -hmm. talents to get the building built, which, mm -hmm. is, pretty, which is pretty awesome. Um, and as we can see here, We'll get a photo. We'll get a, a print photograph of this. But the church, the pews, I think, are the same. They are. These are the same pews that have been here since the building was constructed. They were donated by a church or organization out of West Bridgewater in the 1860s, and so they were brought over from Bridgewater via, I guess, horse and buggy back wow. then. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing that we see here in the back are the various, um, the, um, the youth group here, Sunday school sessions, and this is um, the pastor at the time, Reverend Campbell. Mm -hmm. And um, here in the sanctuary we have um, Whitford Merritt, 
Reverend Campbell with Arthur Somerville, who are, mm -hmm. you know, local residents mm -hmm. here. Um, so and the and the chorus mm -hmm. was very big. Mm -hmm. So we talked briefly about the the future of mm -hmm. of the Beechwood Congregational Building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is something that I, everybody alive today is familiar with this structure as is. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everybody will be watching to mm -hmm. see what does mm -hmm. evolve mm -hmm. with this building. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll find out soon enough, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There, there, are, there are hopes uh, for it to be preserved and uh, used in a fashion uh, that, that honors the legacy of the church and honors the legacy even more broadly of this building in this community. So uh, there, there are hopes and, and uh, efforts in place uh, going in that direction. Um, so so we're, we're excited about, about uh, what, what could potentially unfold in regards to this church, in regards to this building continuing to be used uh, um, as a, uh, just kind of as a landmark in, in this uh, community. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be watching and mm -hmm. very, we're very, it's kind of sad in a mm -hmm. way to see something that's so historic, mm -hmm. um, but it seems to be the way things roll sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, it, it, there, there is a level of, of sadness and uh, uh, just the, the outpouring we've, we've had from the community and uh, from, from uh, people that, you know, even maybe they grew up, I've received numerous emails in the last couple of months from uh, maybe people that are 50 or 60 years old now, but they grew up in this community. They and, went to and, the, and they went to this church. The and, suppers, those yeah, were huge. Yeah, the They've suppers. They've been around since the, like the eighteen. The yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, but now they live in Colorado or mm -hmm. uh, just elsewhere in the greater Boston area, and just uh, people just uh, expressing their sadness, uh, yeah. reading the news in the Mariner uh, about the church's closing, but. Um, the, a thing that I personally, as a pastor, was really encouraged by was as as the church was closing, was the uh, spirit of thankfulness and um, even celebration amongst the church body. Uh, there there was sadness about the church closing, but also kind of a recognition of the 150 years of uh, uh, grace and mercy that the Lord did. Uh, provide to the church. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little, it, was, it was a little bittersweet. Yeah. It was a little bittersweet. But in all those emails and all those stories and things like that, um, you, you just recognize the, the influence that hopefully the church has had on, on folks for many, many years. Because there are people who still live in these surrounding t mm -hmm. homes who were baptized here, mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. got married here. Absolutely. So there is a lot of memories that Absolutely. are surrounding us right now. Absolutely. So. Well, Pastor Stephen McDonald, I really thank you for your time. We're going to um, have an opportunity, I believe, just to walk around a bit and to take a look at the rest of the church, if we could. Absolutely. Thank you again. All right. Bye-bye. The walls, it was repainted green here, uh, as I understand it, about four years ago. Oh. Uh, when they were planning for the coffee house and making arrangements for all of that. But quite a space, quite a space.